Yeah, I think we can. 11.02, I think we can start. Um, thanks to all of you for coming for my very first town hall meeting. Uh, thanks for those of you joining us in person and everyone on Zoom. Uh, you know, the goal today is to just talk about uh, what's been taking place at Beckman over the past few months in terms of people, infrastructure, research, basically where we've been, where we're going. And uh, the imposing bust of Arnold is here, keeping us all in line. <laughs> I think that's a, that's a good thing. Um, so I think that um, I've been here for about three months now. So it seemed like a good time to step back and evaluate just how things are going. Um, think about my time so far, my vision for the institution, and whether I've been following through on some of the things that you all chose me to do here. Um, I admit that when we put these slides together, I was thinking mostly informational. And then uh, I talked to Marty last week, and he said, I can't wait to see your vision moving forward. And I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> so, so it was an excellent opportunity to go back and, and pull out the vision slide that I had presented when I was interviewing here. Um, which really hasn't changed. I mean, my vision then and my vision now is to really build a community of excellence um, here at Beckman that improves lives. And when I think of lives, you know, just like I mentioned then, I don't think of just, you know, our, our goal is to, is to create transformative science and technology, right? Um, and that really will help the world. That is the purpose of the Beckman Institute. But to do that, we, you know, we think about who are we affecting, how are we affecting the world when we do this, how are we affecting ourselves, how are we affecting our communities? And I think this is something that we can and should think about in everything that we do here. You know, are we are we developing um, science and technology that, that, that advance what's known in the world, either for fundamental information or in terms of developing the next thing that's gonna help save lives? Um, you know, are we creating a space where people want to come into work every day? You know, if we wanna come into work, then we're gonna do our best work here. We'll, it'll enable us to do everything else. And are we fulfilling our personal goals? You know, we are, we, we matter. We are people who are working here. It's not just altruistic. We also have to develop things for our own lives. And so this is something that I try to keep in mind as I think about this institute of the people in it, of the work that we do and make sure that we're fulfilling all of these goals. So, you know, when I, when I started, I wrote something about my, my first days at Beckman and what I, what I was going to do. And, uh, and I, I relist them here because I was, I was happy to see him going back. I haven't, I haven't come back to these, honestly, until about two days ago. <laughs> and uh, I was happy to see that when I went back to it, we really had been following through on a lot of these things, even in just a, just a few months. We've been, been very, very active. So, um, you know, what I wrote as my first days at Beckman, I was going to uh, meet with staff, faculty, students, leadership, um, think about the needs, constraints, and goals. And I can confirm, and Stacy can confirm too, that I've had a lot of meetings, <laughs> a lot of meetings with everyone across campus, from the Humanities Institute to uh, to, to artists with shows at uh, the Cranard, uh, to to the to people in you know, to IGB, to everyone, to people here, um, really trying to understand how to make better connections across campus, how to build on the great things that we're already doing, how to address the needs that, that we have. And so that's been that's been great and that's helping me form my vision of what we can do moving forward. But you know, here I've listed just what I wrote back then as my initial areas of focus. And I'm really happy to say that we've actually made progress in a lot of these. For example, in the research themes, I've been thinking about ways to strengthen the roles of the theme leads to make sure that the themes are more cohesive and are really working together to produce cutting edge science. And so you'll all hear more about that as we as we continue to draft to draft that. Um, I've been helping people with large collaborative grants moving forward, making sure that we have a lot of funded team science here because that's what enables the research. Um, I wanted to have seed funding for new initiatives, and I hope you've all seen that we, in fact, have seed calls that came out for, for in three different areas. I'll say more about this, but I'm really excited to see what you all come up with moving forward. Um, you know, especially coming off the pandemic, I think it's been really important to make sure that we all have, that we want to be here, that we spend quality time here, that that our, that our time here um, is, 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 Joyful, really. <laughs> I hesitate using that word. You don't often associate work with joyfulness, but there's no reason not to. And so we've instituted new things like cookie hours and painting and student meetings. I'll say more about those as well. Um, increasing outreach and diversity. We formed a new diversity committee that'll be convening in January. I'll say more about that. New outreach activities as well. Um, and uh, in terms of increasing visibility, I've been uh, 
we had our first program committee meeting for a new Northwest Welcome Center um, out here and, and in, on, at the, in the Beckman Garden. And so I'm really excited about that and we'll say more about that. Um, there are some things here that I haven't um, you know, put specific things on. Those we're still thinking about. It's not that I've dropped them. I really want to think hard about supporting faculty, and especially staff and professional development programs moving forward. And so these are all things that um, that are ongoing. Again, it's only been three months <laughs> for, for me, at least. You know, a lot of these, of course, were started under Jeff, and I've been able to push a lot of these forward. But but these are areas that I've been thinking about, and I hope to by my next town hall meeting in a few months that there'll be something to say in all of these areas. I just want to say that after I mean, I'm hoping there'll be time for talk, discussion, questions, and things after this talk. So you all tell me what you want, and then I'll put more line items on there. Okay, so let me go into detail about about some of these things. Uh, new director initiatives. I mean, as I mentioned, I'm especially excited about of the new funding initiatives. You know, the goal we can't really we can't do what we do without being without funding. Right? We're really fortunate to get some funding from the Beckman Foundation, but we do need grant funding to. Uh, do our research. Um, we're, you know, Earl has put together some metrics showing that Beckman as a whole is especially very low in NIH funding, um, and the university as a whole is very low in NIH funding. And so that's an area that I think we can really um, build and contribute to. So uh, we uh, set out a call for research seed funding. I hope everyone here has seen that. Yes. Okay. So uh, the, the goal here is to um, is to have collaborations with at least two or three PIs, one of whom should be based at Beckman. Um, with, with research to be done at Beckman, and we're evaluating this based on just exciting new ideas that fulfill our values here, which are interdisciplinarity, collaborative research, cutting edge science. And the goal is after um, one to two years of seed funding, you can use this to build up um, new grants and get new funding to build this research. And so these are um, two to three per year will be funded, two to three PI is up to 150K each, and this will be this ongoing. Uh, the deadline for this is February 15th, so um, you don't have to spend your holidays on it, but, you know, be thinking now. It's a, it's a really short, the goal is also short proposals, you know, four to five pages. Just put your idea forward. It'll be evaluated by the program committee in February. Uh, we've also instituted bridge funding. This came from comments from some of you that there, there's really no mechanism for funding things when you're in between grants, things like maybe extra publication costs or a computer, or, or maybe people don't have big grants that that, that right now and need these things to move forward. So we've instituted bridge funding up to $7,500 for things that are not covered by, for research needs that are not covered by standard grants. Um, and this these will be evaluated monthly on a rolling basis because needs come up and we want to be able to address them as they come up. Um, there's not an infinite amount of funding. So, you know, if we fund you know, $50,000 in the first three months or something, which is a lot, you know, we may have to put a hold, but send in your proposals. We're just, we're throwing it out there. We want to see what you do. So send in things. Same things for outreach and engagement grants. We really want to increase our visibility, our engagement with the outside community, our engagement with the internal communities and with, with our scientific communities. And so these are grants that cover things that are, that are not covered by regular research grants that increase the visibility of Beckman, increase our engagement overall. So things that can be covered are scientific workshops, bringing in invited speakers, um, uh, you know, supplies for going into a local school, you know, things like a new ultrasound that we bought recently. These are things that can be, that, that we'll use for schools and demonstrations. These are things that can be covered here. Again, we're funding it on a rolling deadline, anywhere between $500 and $7,500, or do we have a limit? Yeah, something like that, right? It's too small, it's not worth it. But yeah, so really for up to, up to $7,500. And, you know, I hope that you think of this and think of ways that you can use this funding to build engagement with, with Beckman and with the communities around. Okay, so again, oh, I should also mention that the outreach and engagement grants are open to everyone. They're open to staff, they're open to students, they're open to postdocs. So if you have students and postdocs who are really excited, I mean, in the in the, in the MRSEC that I run, we had a student who wrote a, a children's book called Gene the Graphene. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it was about graphene and a character named Jean. Um, and uh, and they used money that we that we seeded them to uh, to help illustrate the book, for example. And that was a, a graduate student who did that. So um, you know, encourage your students to have ideas and, and use these things to big forward as well. Um, and we also we still have an annual equipment competition for share research facilities and um, 
And so that will continue, but I'm really thinking of ways of how to better engage faculty in this as well. I know that the facilities do a really good job of reaching out to you all, but I wanna make sure that this is really a two-way thing that the faculty and staff are really communicating as we prioritize equipment moving forward. Okay, the other thing we've been thinking about is improving the climate here. It, it's a great climate here. People love working at Beckman. That's something that, that's been repeated to me over and over again, and that's been that's fantastic, but it doesn't mean that we can't do better. Uh, there, we had a climate survey, the results which came in, in uh, later in this, this past spring, and we've been reading that and thinking about how to really directly address some of the issues that have come up in the climate survey um, moving forward. We want to make sure that we just don't drop, you know, this, there's nothing worse than getting results like this and then not following through. So we are following through on these. Um, one of the biggest things we've done is formed a new DEI committee. Um, I think some people were surprised we didn't have a DEI committee at Beckman before. Um, you know, that's because there, there was a ton of work done in trying to improve the climate. But now I think this the time is right for doing it um, in a more systematic way through people. So uh, the committee is, is here. Um, and, uh, and even though this is the, the first committee, we really do want input from everyone. So I'm sure the committee will be reaching out to the broader Beckman community to find out what everyone here thinks and wants and needs. Um, you know, the initial goals are just to make sure that we're implementing the recommendations from the climate study, that we're connecting to campus diversity, diversity initiatives, um, that we are raising awareness of, of DEI initiatives across the, the Beckman community, um, and that we're um, creating safe spaces for dialogue and, and learning moving forward. Okay. So uh, Shauna is the chair of this committee, so if you have thoughts about it, please direct them to Shauna, or to me, to anyone. But I'm excited to see what this committee will do moving forward. Another issue that came up in the climate survey was just the difficulty of, you know, this is a really big building. <laughs> and there's, there's I mean, I, I'll, I admit, I, I still get lost a lot trying to find your offices and labs and things like that. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's been difficult for people to know what's going on and to connect across groups and themes and, and resources. Um, and, you know, we've been told that when people arrive, they just don't really know where to start. And so we're really trying to improve the onboarding process for new faculty, students, staff, postdocs, for everyone. Um, part of this is, um, is having a set of materials that people can look at about our themes, about our research, about our buildings, about our history, um, and also having a new welcome video. So Meg Dickinson is, is, uh, is leading this, and it'll be a video that will require everyone to watch when they come in that just introduces them to Beckman. We're also going to have what we hope is a required tour. I mean, required is a, I mean, that sounds rough. I and mean, it, it should be everyone should want to do this, but a tour when people come, when people first, you know, join the Beckman community to just, you know, quickly show them where, where are the facilities? Where are people's labs? What are people doing here? Um, you know, where are the bathrooms on each floor? <laughs> all these, all these little details that can make life much easier as people arrive. And so, so all of this will, um, so these new Beckman tours um, will be offered that the first Thursday of every month. So people can, can really go on them as they arrive. And then all this other material will be coming soon as well. Uh, we're also trying to increase postdoc and student engagement. We had several meetings with, uh, that were open to all postdocs and, and graduate students just meet with us and talk to us about what they wanted uh, here, what they were thinking of. Um, I'll be honest that the, the turnout wasn't huge for the, for the postdoc grad student engagement. So I, I talked to someone else about this and they said, oh, no, no, you have to assign people to go to it. And so, you know, people sometimes don't know. So, you know, I think that moving forward, we may be asking you all for nominations of postdocs and graduate students to have a group to advise us on, on their needs. But, um, but we are thinking about this. We do want to reach out. We have a huge graduate student and postdoc community. They're here all the time. They're the ones who are really moving things forward. And we want to know what their experience is and make sure that they're getting what they need. Another idea that, that we've had recently is, is the Grad Fellows Program. Uh, right now, the Grad Fellows Program takes graduate students who are already existing at the university and gives them money to be Beckman Fellows and pays for their stipends. The thought is, could we use this more effectively to recruit people, especially more diverse populations, to the campus and to the institute? And so we're thinking of taking some of the funding for the grad fellows and using it as, um, as scho supplemental scholarships for admitted students, especially students from underrepresented populations. And the idea is that we'll sweeten the, the deal for them to accept admittance at Illinois, and then we increase the pool that way. And when they accept this scholarship, they'll also agree to work with the Beckman faculty or staff for a year. Um, and so we're just, we're still working through the details of that. We hope to have that in place um, by this year's admissions program. Um, 
ideally. And so that that's a way that, you know, even if a third of the students, you know, if, if some fraction of the students come to university and they're more diverse students, that's great for all of us. If some fraction of them come to work at Beckman, that's even better. So I think it's a win-win all around and we're looking forward to seeing how that, how that works out. <clears throat> You'll hear more about that as well. So, of course, we have to work with you guys to have people admitted into your departments and then agree to work with them. Uh, we have a new outreach coordinator and strategy. My forward one. Um, so, you know, before I came here, now <laughs> I still think about that outreach and, and engagement a lot. Um, this is something I've, I've been thinking about for, for, for many years. Uh, the time is really right for us to, to do this in a more systematic and um, in all-encompassing way at the Beckman Institute. Uh, so we, uh, you know, we've we've thought about we've thought about why we want to engage in outreach and what are our metrics for engaging in outreach and engagement. And I say this because Beckman is known across campus as a place that just has money. And so you can't, you be maybe you wouldn't be surprised, but we get an enormous amount of you know student groups and others just emailing us and saying hey can we have a thousand dollars hey can we have a thousand dollars and you know that's that's fine in some sense but we really want to make sure that when we do outreach that it's effective that there's a reason that it brings something back to the institute in terms of what we care about that there's a reason a rationale behind it and so you know when we when we think about outreach we're, we're guided by thinking about are we increasing these things are we increasing the values behind them and interdisciplinarity establishing relationships, visibility, literacy, helping people understand science and inclusivity, right? So when we agree now to do outreach, we're thinking about how we're increasing these, these things. And of course, it's best if this is, you know, is centered at Beckman, but even if it's not, if there's an interdisciplinary group across campus that includes people who are at Beckman, we want to support that too, because that fits with our mission. And of course, we have a fantastic new outreach coordinator, Lexi Kessler. Lexi was in the class. There she is. Hi, Lexi. Um, so Lexi was a, uh, she is, is, uh, is, is fantastic. She's, she's been here for a few months and already very, very effective. She's been going into schools and going to the community. Lexi has also been meeting with a ton of people across campus and in the community, establishing relationships, thinking about opportunities um, to, to fulfill our principles and get us engaged in, 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 in more ways. Um, and Lexi um, can help all of you, right? Again, students, faculty, staff, postdocs, um, develop programs to to engage. So we have existing Beckman programs, and you'll see, I hope, in the in the bulletin and other places that she emails and says, "Is anyone interested in this? You know, do you guys want to be involved in this?" Um, so, but if you have, say, a grant that you're writing that requires some level of engagement, or if you just want to engage in a certain way the community in the community, if you really just love going to the farmers market and want to make sure that Beckman has a booth there every time. You know, Lexi is a person who can help you with this. She can help you develop programs, find people to participate, make sure that they reach, that they meet learning standards. Lexi was a former middle school teacher. And so uh, she knows the learning standards in the schools if you want to do that. So she's an amazing resource and really pushing forward. And I think will will help all of us um, engage better with the community and help all of you in, in ways that, um, that you may not even realize right now. Uh, so uh, Lexi's going to evaluate our outreach seed funding and also it's organized in the Beckman Institute Open House. So this hasn't happened in person for a few years now. Um, you know, this is this was probably my first introduction to Beckman when I came to campus, going to this open house with my children when they were young. Uh, it's a it's you know, I assume everyone here has been to the open house before, right? But it's it's fantastic, it's amazing, but it does require a lot of work from everyone. It requires all of us to make sure that we have demos, make sure we encourage our graduate students and postdocs to have booths. So please, when Lexi puts out calls for open house, please respond and and uh, and try to have something there that we can uh, that we can present. It'll be really great this year. I'm excited about it. Um, as I mentioned, you know, I I, I think about um about wanting to come into work, about being, you know, it, it's, it's, there's, there's, it's been a very stressful few years for all of us, I think, you know, it's just, there's a lot going on. There's a pandemic, there's politics, there's just things that are, that are very difficult to deal with. And as much as we want to separate our work lives from our physical, emotional, and mental health, we can't do that because we're just one person. So, um, you know, as much as we can help contribute to overall wellness at the Institute, even during the workday, because that's a good fraction of your lives, right? We, we want to do that. I think that makes us better people, better um, workers overall. It's better for the community. So, um, so we've been trying to incorporate some of these activities. You know, the, the ping pong tables were, <laughs> were 
Jeff's, Jeff Moore's brainchild, really, I have him to thank for this. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen the video. You don't have to watch the video. <laughs> it was a surprise to me when, when they said they were filming it, but <laughs> it's uh it, it's pretty funny. Um, but uh, but they are available in room 4602 and they're a great stress relief if you want to if you want to go up there. There are also games outside in the room there. Um, you know, we've been we've been trying to do sort of more uh, creative activities. We did pumpkin painting in, in October. You know, for this, I was I was inspired by a talk I went to uh this past uh early fall by Yo-Yo Yo -Yo Ma, the cellist. And uh, and he said that he, it was actually, it was, it was him and there was this like billionaire investment banker. And they both agreed on this, that 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 you should spend up to 30% of your day on creative activities, right? And the idea is that, you know, if you're just grinding away, you're not thinking broadly and you're not, you, you know, you lose sense of a vision and purpose and values and why you do things. But if you think creatively for some good fraction of your time, then that really helps you focus on the activities that you do and you do them better. And so 30% seemed like a huge amount to me, but but I get it, right? So, you know, we are actually trying to incorporate some of these more creative and fun activities into our daily schedules. And um, and pumpkin painting was a start. You can see some people were super creative. My, my pumpkin is like stripes over there, not super creative, but it was still fun. So I encourage you to engage with these. Um, you know, Faculty, staff, you know, students, and again, I you know, I encourage faculty to join for these things. I know we think we're really busy, and we are really busy, but you know, they these things really do kind of help you go through your day. It you know, helps move things forward. So uh, we've also been continuing to do coffee um, and and cook in in the garden. So every Tuesday we have coffee in the garden. Now it's Tuesday coffee in the atrium, and we've started a uh, monthly coffee and cookies um, every every Friday. Thursday <laughs> at three once a month. <laughs> you guys have been invited. The attendance has actually been really great for these. And so again, I encourage all of you. Um, it's, it's funny how how the the number of people you know increases by a factor of ten once you add cookies to the mix, <laughs> or, or brownies. Once the brownies are there, increased by another fifty percent. So um, you know, it's, again, it's a great chance to come by, chat with your students, chat with staff. You know, I saw some people bring their whole groups down and just sit at tables and and chat during these times. So um, you know, hopefully they're on your calendar and you engage in that. And we are continuing yoga on Wednesdays. Uh, this is fifth floor noon on Wednesdays, and so there's space for people. Please um, consider joining that as well. Okay, so uh, in terms of research themes, uh, the only update I wanted to give you here is that we did have a site visit by um, for our molecular science and engineering theme in October. Um, the site visit team was was really impressed by the people here, by the facilities, by the research. Um, I want to give a special shout out to Charles Schroeder, who really helped organize the talks here, as well as to the theme leads, um, Ning Diao, um, Nancy Soto, Zan Schulten, who gave really great talks for this. Um, presentation. So this is a really interesting, successful site visit. Um, just some highlights here. Uh, the committee was really impressed by the um, theoretical and computation biologies leadership. They had some great demos. If you haven't seen their 3D demos, they're super cool. You, you know, it's like a big, well, the one I have is like a coronavirus in a room, right? It was like, it's, it's the room. Anyway, very cool. Make sure you look at those. Um, the AMS group had some amazing demos showing some of their their recent work on on, on polymers and, um, and and polymers that can that can that were flexible. Okay, I'll start. <laughs> I didn't describe it, but they were cool. Again, you should uh, you should go visit and see what they're doing. Um, and uh, and they're also excited about the new EFRC led by Nancy Sotos. That's uh, that's part of this group, and I think that'll be great team science moving forward. And also, they're very excited about. The AI for Materials Working Group, which is combining things in the molecular maker lab with machine learning to make new new molecules. Um, overall, the work in the molecular maker lab was described as eye opening in a, in a very positive way, and so um, and so that was really um, that was really a great visit. And I think um, I'm very excited about that group moving forward and all of the themes. I want to especially thank Charles again for for leading the the um, MSC group. Uh, Charles has decided to step down as co chair after five years, I think, of sharing it. He's the chair who's been served the longest. Um, he's going to continue to lead the AI for Materials Working Group. Um, and we're really grateful that he's going to continue to lead that group and grateful for, for his service leading the theme overall. Uh, which brings me to the next um, topic, which is that we are introducing a new model for choosing theme co-chairs. I think when I <laughs> when I mentioned it to people, even at Bixie, about you know changing theme leads, everyone said, well, how is that done? 
And it seems turns out that it was just different across all of the themes. And so we're trying to have a more systematic and democratic method for, for choosing uh, theme co-chairs. Um, you know, it's possible that our, 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 our selection might end up with, you know, one person anyway, right? But, but those of you who are in the MSC theme, think already about whether you're willing to serve in this capacity and we will be reaching out to you um, very soon for about this. I wanna note also, there's no site visit scheduled for 2023. Uh, we're gonna have a retreat in the spring instead. And um, one of the topics is going to be the organization of the themes and the groups. Um, I just wanna make sure that those are effective, that they're rational and that everyone um, likes that structure moving forward. And we can also talk about anything else. So again, if you have things, if you if you can think of things that we really need to talk about, um, you know, structural things at Beckman that are optimal for discussing at a retreat, just please contact me, send me an email, meet with me. I'm really happy to have open discussions. These are these are opportunities for us to just do better right, and do more. Okay, I'm gonna quickly go through some personnel changes. We've had a lot of a lot of changes at all levels um, at the institute. We've had a, a bunch of new new faculty who have joint. Um, you know, Mark Cohen especially has labs that are being built now on the first floor and in the basement. Um, I'm not going to go through their names, but hopefully you can read and you can see the pictures. And so if you see these faculty, please welcome them. You can see one of the nice things you can see is they're really across campus again, right? It's not just the College of Engineering, but from all areas of campus, really um, filling in different areas, gaps in research that, that we have here. Um, Here's more faculty um, who, who have joined recently from, from across campus. Uh, new staff, in particular, I want to welcome Shauna Grady, who is our new director of administration. Shauna and I, where's Shauna? There's Shauna. There's Shauna. <laughs> um, Shauna and I started around the same time, so it's been a really fun and growing experience for both of us being new here. I think it's been, it's been great. I think having, having fresh eyes on a lot of things and thinking about a lot of what I've talked about, thinking systematically about how we do things is really thanks to Shauna, who, um, who's really eager to take on lots of tasks to make things just better for us overall. So, um, so I'm looking forward to many more years working with you. Um, a lot of our facilities team is new. Uh, we have a new director of facilities, uh, Josh Whitson, and new assistant director of facilities, a uh, new research facility attendant. Um, Darren is moving to a new position as research facility attendant. And so, um, you know, I think many of you who, especially who are renovating spaces, have worked with them already. Um, I would ask for, you know, if, you know, I was going to ask for patience if it takes more time to do things, but I don't think it has taken more time because these guys have been really efficient in getting things up and running. So I'll just say an appreciation to them for taking on all these complex tasks and just jumping in with both feet. Uh, new people in the business office, Lenata, Cody, and, and Terry, we are, we have been missing multiple people in the business office. So hopefully with these additions, things will, will go even more smoothly with grants and contracts moving forward. Um, and as I mentioned, Lexi is our new outreach and communications coordinator, and Shana is our new database applications coordinator in IT. Uh, in terms of research staff, we have a new office manager for uh, TCBP and a new microscopist, um, as well as, as other people um, in, different, in different areas, um, and new postdocs who have, who have joined us in the past. I think this is all since May. So, you know, we continue to rejuvenate, we continue to change, and so, um, you know, there's a... Don't fear change. <laughs> there, there are people who move in, there are people who move out. There's enough stability here. And uh, I think there's a lot of excitement about looking, looking at things moving forward and, uh, and really um, improving on what we have, as I mentioned. Uh, just to mention, there's going to be a space swap for staff and postdocs. So if those of you who go to the fifth floor to talk to, oh, sorry, those of you who go to the, to the first floor to talk to people in the business office, they will be moved up to the fifth floor. And the um, Beckman postdocs who are currently on the fifth floor will be moved down to the first floor. And the idea is to get the postdocs more integrated with everyone down here and together in a suite and get a lot more of the business operations in the same area on the fifth floor. So um, just look forward to that. That will happen in January. Um, a picture here. Uh, as you all know, we unfortunately, Gabby Popescu passed away earlier in June. Uh, we had a really nice memorial for him in um, in September, and I wanted to let you all know that there will be a research research symposium in his honor. The date for that is set for April 13th. Um, so write down that date uh, if you're here. It should be a really nice symposium with his former students, colleagues, collaborators. That's that's more focused on research um, than than the previous one. So um, so that should be, and that I believe will be um, in tandem with a uh, with the with a um, a kickoff for the Climb Center. 
um, for Steve, for Steve, right? So we'll have the the one day um, symposium for Gabby, and then connect it to that a day or, or slightly longer um, kickoff for the the Climb Center, which is also you know has a lot of the same people and a lot of the same interesting talks. So just uh, save the date for that. And finally, Patty, <laughs> not finally, but you know. <laughs> In terms of personnel changes, Patty gets her own slide. Um, Patty is moving into the OBCR's office in January after 10 years here at Beckman. Um, I have more words to say about that. I'm going to save them for our celebration of her, which is in the atrium immediately after this. And so you saw the table set up, and we will celebrate Patty appropriately right after this talk. Okay. Last few slides is just a quick update on new facilities and resources here. Um, one is the tumor engineering and phenotyping shared resource that um, had an opening in the fall. That is, um, as I mentioned, the, the largest shared space for cancer research in the university. And so we're very happy to be hosting that in, in the basement of Beckman, and hopefully it will be continue to be heavily used moving forward. It is a shared facility and resource. Uh, the Beckman Cafe renovation is, is on track still. We are, um, we are excited about transforming that space as a destination for, for lunch. For coffee, I know everyone wants good coffee. We we know that. <laughs> they're they're going to put in filters. There's going to be good coffee. There's going to be a separate coffee shop that's open all day long with, you know, pick up hot and cold food. Um, you know, we're, we're thinking of all those sorts of things, even a separate room for sort of, you know, faculty or, or visitor lunches that separate and set, and set out. So um, there's, there's lots of exciting um, changes, transformations that will happen there. And hopefully that will happen in the next in the next year or two. Uh, we have new accessibility initiatives. Um, Mark Casagara Johnson has been leading a speech accessibility project through Beckman. This is with the five major tech companies: like Google, Amazon, Apple, two others, <laughs> Meta, Microsoft. There you go. <laughs> um, so, uh, okay, the big ones, right? This, the goal here is to improve speech recognition uh, for people with unconventional speech patterns. And I mentioned this because it is running through Beckman. So Eric Hage and IT has been setting up all the infrastructure for this. And Mike Dickinson has been doing all of the marketing for this. And Patty has been basically organizing the whole thing. And so this really is a, a, a Beckman initiative um, that will hopefully have a really big positive impact moving forward. And as some of you know, I hope everyone had a chance to see the new disability design studio that just opened um, last week. I think we had the opening. It seems like a long time ago, but it was a fantastic opening with a tropical theme. Thank you, Dina. Um, and uh, and again, the goal here is the goal for this studio is to just be a a drop in place that if you're working on something or thinking of renovating a lab or making a device or or doing something that has some engagement components, you should be thinking about the accessibility of this. You know, I mean, I mean, we all know this example of that. You know, you know, we have to, they have to change the color of the Illinois eye again because it turns out that some people um, with visual impairment can't see that contrast, and so that entire marketing structure has to be redone because they didn't think at the beginning about accessibility issues. Right? So that's just one example of how these things impact us in ways that we just may not realize at all at first. And so Dina has created this studio where you can drop in and talk about these things. You know, hey, I'm doing this thing. Do you think there's accessibility issues here? And even if it's not directly relevant to your project, maybe it gets us thinking in that direction. So I'm very excited. And, you know, combining these things together, I think I'm very excited for us to be the locale for thinking about greater access overall in the community. A new cancer center building is coming. So the chancellor announced $75 million for a new cancer center building. Um, that will not be all of the money needed to build this. We will need more. There will be some fundraising. There's not necessarily a time scale yet, but this is something that um, at the highest levels of the university, people are excited about and invested in. Uh, the, 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 the thought is that this cancer center will be built in what is now our circle drive, sort of wrapping around a little bit there. So we may lose parking or talking about, but we will gain um, a really close connection to just one of the most exciting new buildings on campus that focuses on cancer research, but that you know may have space from like their Maker Lab and the Drug Discovery Institute that will have wet lab space that can connect to a lot of what people here are doing. And so moving forward in the next year, I hope to have more conversations about how Beckman as a whole can best connect to leverage and um, and help with the with the cancer center that will be coming. And as I mentioned in the very beginning, um, the campus there's a campus welcome center that will transform the Beckman Garden. Again, this is something that had been bouncing around for years before I came. 
Um, I, I just loved the idea and had the opportunity to pitch it to the chancellor directly. And he was really excited about it and is fully on board with this. And so we just had our program committee discussion yesterday. Um, the idea is to you know, take down that fence, okay? breaking, breaking barriers between us and the communities around us. Um, not just, you know, not just the dorms that are across the street, but anyone coming through the medical corridor now, going to Carl, going to the cancer center, going to the College of Medicine, you know, their first entry to university is this corner. And is that a welcoming corner? Is there a way for people to stop in and be part of the university from there? You know, also our northern communities, these are mostly black and brown communities to the north. They've just been cut off from that side. You know, is there a way to have school buses come in from there? Are kids come in even after school and go to the cafe? So these are the things we're thinking about moving forward. Um, and we're also hoping that well, we will be connecting it to one of the major um, landscape planning initiatives, which is creating more indigenous spaces on campus. So spaces that reflect our indigenous heritage. And so hopefully the, I know that the garden will be reflecting our indigenous heritage. We have members of the native community on the planning committee and they're thinking of ways to, to do that as well. So um, just a lot of exciting things. Um, Hopefully we'll transform this space, we'll be connected to the cafe renovation, connected to the cancer center, and really make this space the community um, you know, thoroughfare that it, that it was designed to be. Um, and you know, holidays, we're going to have a special cookie collab at, at 3 p.m. on December 15th. I've made a request for uh, special hot chocolates and apple cider. Is there apple cider? Hot chocolate. Oh, good. <laughs> I was like, I hope I requested that. So I, I think I was pretty insistent on mini marshmallows or whipped cream. <laughs> whipped cream. Okay, something to top it. So, <laughs> so join us on, on December 15th for, uh, for a special holiday uh, collaboration. And um, you know, in conclusion, I just want to say that uh, if I can sum up my, my first three months here, um, you know, this is this is all that I expected and hoped for and more. It's a, it's just a great job. It's a great place. Uh, people ask me all the time how it's going. I keep saying, like, it's great. And they look at me really dubiously because I think, they, I don't know, I think they think I should be more stressed or more worried. But it's, it's really great because you guys are great, right? You guys just are really pushing forward things that, that, that I care about, that the Institute cares about. Um, that, that you care about. And I think when we share these values and share this mission, it just makes it a really fun place to work um, and a really effective place to do great things. So um, I'm looking forward to continuing the journey with all of you. And with that, I will end. I will take questions. And just don't forget that right after this, we have our celebration for Patty. So thank you very much. Thoughts, questions, concerns? I don't see Zoom. Do you have Zoom? I can see it. Oh. I'll let you know. Okay. You don't have. Everything's good, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, it's so overwhelming. I'm trying to. Okay. Wait like 10 more uncomfortable seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. I just have a question about the logistics. So for the cancer center being built, uh, for, the, for the cancer center in the parking situation for when we do the welcome center idea, so that since there's no real expansion being talked about right now, the existing parking yeah. center, right? you have some people in here, how is yeah. that going to yeah, together? yeah. The, the question is, how, how, what are we going to do with parking if we lose our circle drive? This is something that we are we are all thinking about. I mean, of course, there's the parking structure, but it's, it's a little bit far. We do need people coming in for... Um, for volunteers, for the MRI, for visitors and things like that. Um, I am trying to push for the Welcome Center to have parking along, along this side. Uh, there are complications because there's a steam tunnel there and um, they don't like parking. I, you know, it's, it's hard because I think I've heard that, you know, on the one hand, you can't have a Welcome Center and you can't have a building like this without parking close by. On the other hand, someone told me that they've seen landscaping jobs just being taken over by a parking lot. Right. And so we're we are working with landscaping and trying trying to figure that out. Um, that's the other problem is we don't own this Matthews here, right? Whatever it is, we don't own that street. It's not a campus street, and so we can't just take over the have like you know set aside parking on that street because it's not ours. Um, so we are working on it. That's all I can say. We 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 all recognize the need for it. Like, definitely, there's a need for it. Um, you know, the, the worst case scenario is that it's the parking structure, which is there, but um, 
yeah, we recognize the need and there, there, there will be some hard choices about what we're willing to give up face wise. You know, the cancer center is supposed to have a community courtyard between the two institutes. So, you know, what do we care about more, the courtyard or parking? You know, what do we care about more, the more garden or parking? I mean, that's not, I don't mean that rhetorically, that's a hard choice. And so we're thinking about it and we'll have to make decisions moving forward. Okay. More hard questions. Jeff Moore says, thanks for all the wonderful updates. Oh. And thank you, Jeff, for, for setting the stage and for doing, you know, half of this is Jeff's work. I should acknowledge that, you know, the mission is all, most, much of this is started by Jeff. So thank you. Okay, so on that note, I think that we can um, prepare to the atrium to, uh, to help celebrate Patty. There'll be remarks at 1215. So in half an hour, there's hopefully food and drinks out there now. And uh, and thank you, everyone.